Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. Thank you for turning to my channel. If you haven't done so already, four things. One, hit the like button. Two, hit the subscribe button. Three, hit the bell notification. And then always leave a comment down below because I do answer the comments. And if the comments get too extensive or the questions, please go to my webpage and I'll be more than happy to have a consultation with you in regards to your questions because the questions are very detailed sometimes. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on? Nice shirt. Yep. He was a bad dude. <laughs> Are you going to get into the video that if you had gallbladder removed? Yeah, let's get into that. Because we have a lot of questions on that. All right, thanks, you. All right. Take care. All right, cool. All right, enjoy the video. This is good material. All right, I hope you enjoy the video. Take care. Thank I'll see you, you next time. Dr. Juwad, thank you for turning in. Now, I'm just continuing a series of the importance of bile acids to bile salts, the importance of the gallbladder, and following this, I'm going to do how lipolysis, which is a breakdown of fats, so if you, when you eat a cheeseburger, what are all the mechanics involved in breaking down those fats that are digested in the small intestines to form the fatty acids and all the good stuff that's needed for our system to work? In addition to following up the explanation of really what is bile and why is it so important. And the questions that I get is about the gallbladder. Now, gallstones are cholesterol stones, meaning that they build up and build up and build up. Now, the question is, should you get removed or should you not? The research that I've done is that if those cholesterol stones, those gallstones are just big, too big in the gallbladder, yes, you have to get it removed. You're done. You, you, you can't, you know, just you can't pass go, just go to jail. Reason being is because the bigger they are, these duct systems are very small. What you don't want to happen is plug up the duct system, especially to the gallbladder, and or if it gets stuck in the duct system up to the liver, you're going to back up what's called bilirubin. Bilirubin is needed to make bile. Bilirubin is a byproduct of our red blood cells. Now, what you don't want to happen is causing that backup, which causes inflammation in the duct system, which could cause an inflammation in the liver, the liver duct system. So exactly, what is the function of bile? Because I hear it's, it's the detergent that takes away the grease. That doesn't make any sense to me. So because when, you, when we eat a fatty substance, it, ha it forms a, a globule, right now, lack of a better term, and it's part water and it's part lipid. So it's kind of like mixing oil and water together. Now if you have a pan, a frying pan, and you cook something on it, you can't just really hit, hit it, put it over the sink and let the water clean out the grease. You need something strong like a detergent to help break down the grease so it separates. So then now you have two components. And that's essentially what bile is when it comes into the small intestines because when you, eat the, when you eat a fatty substance, it forms a fat globule and nothing else could break it down into smaller particles besides bile. So I hope that helps. Now, just to review, what's the function of bile? Bile is phenomenal. It helps eliminate the excess cholesterol and toxic compounds because remember, it's circulated throughout the system and the only way to eliminate excessive cholesterol is through the bile. And fi it fights infectious agents. It helps with the gallbladder and the liver function because it's made in the liver, stored and concentrated in the gallbladder. It helps dissolve the gallstones. It helps emulsify fats, meaning that, remember, the fat globule is huge. So the bile acids, then bile salts, stored and concentrated in the gallbladder, helps break down, and that process is called emulsification. Because your body cannot break down this huge globule. There's no possible way. So what it does, through the help of the pancreas, through lipase and colipase, it kind of sheds it down. It's like the scissors that just kind of, the metabolic scissors that cuts everything down to a size for better absorption. The small intestines needs to have a nice bacterial bed, and that's one of the benefits of bile, is to help with the microbiome and keep it nice and healthy. So it decreases 
intestinal inflammation. In addition, it controls blood sugar levels. Why? Because when you are breaking down the food products efficiently, your blood sugar is not going to spike and drop, spike and drop. It's going to be more steady because one of the things about triglycerides, it doesn't have an insulin release. So there's no spike in ins insulin. This is why eating actually fat foods, I'm not talking about ho-hos and ding-dongs. I'm talking about back in the days, back in I think it was like the early 90s, we had this boom, this fat-free boom. Well, the problem is when you don't eat regular fat in the foods, it fills it with artificial ingredients and then you get blood sugar uh, fluctuations. What regular fat does, it sends a signal, well, first of all, it hit, when it hits your stomach, it sends a signal to your, to your head, to your pituitary gland, I'm full. So that's another reason why how it controls blood sugar. In addition, it triggers the release of glutathione. What's glutathione? Glutathione is the most powerful antioxidant that we have in our liver to help clean out our filter, to make sure our filter is always clean because our liver has a lot of functions. In addition, it eliminates bilirubin. Bilirubin, remember, bilirubin helps make the bile, but in addition, bilirubin, it also gives us our fecal matter, it's color. So if, if it's not being eliminated, you're gonna back it up in the liver, in the duct system, it's gonna cause inflammation. It helps lower low density lipoproteins. This is, the bad, this is the bad cholesterol because what happens with the LDL, it travels around the bloodstream to the peripheral tissues because we need it, but however, if it's too much, it gets buried underneath the endothelial lining and this is where we get plaque buildup and narrowing, arthrosclerosis. So now what do we do? Let's take this sucker out, bam. Okay, now again, how did, how did gallstones happen? You didn't eat enough fatty foods to keep this thing working. Remember, if you don't use it, you lose it. So let's take it out because your gallstones are too huge. Now what happens? Remember, it's made in the liver and stored and concentrated in the gallbladder. So when you're in fasting, it's, not, it's there, but when you eat a cheeseburger, what happens? It works. But now it's just a leaky faucet. Drip, drip, drip. Where? Into the small intestines. Is it concentrated? No. Is it diluted? Yes. Is it bile salt? No. Without the gallbladder, you have no ability to convert bile acid, bile salt. There's no ability. This is why I stress with this supplement, you need to take this supplement from now on because the main ingredient is ox bile. It's kind of like doing the job now for the gallbladder. Now, I'm not saying take it with you know, every single meal, like a banana or a cup of yogurt, but basically when you're taking like the big meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, you need extra help. I take it when I'm you know, eating out or if I have a big, big lunch or something like that, sure, I'll throw some in me to help me out. But for you, who doesn't have a gallbladder, you need it all the time. And yes, for the rest of your life, sorry. So now that you have your gallbladder removed, what are you going to have now? You're gonna have a bile deficiency, which what's gonna do is gonna lead up to, and you will get fatty liver. And it's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease because one of the functions of bile it's necessary to break down cholesterol and fats. So what's gonna happen now, you have a bowel deficiency and the liver is gonna get fatty, it's gonna, you're gonna have a fatty liver. In addition, addition, the liver makes about 350 milligrams of bile per day. It's stored and concentrated in the gallbladder so when you eat fat, fatty foods, what does it do? It squeezes out the necessary bile to break it down. However, now without the gallbladder, you're going to have diluted bile. So it's not going to be as effective as if you have the gallbladder. So thank you very much. Okay, so now that you don't have the gallbladder, what are the symptoms that, are you, that you're going to experience? Now, the symptoms are called post-cholecystectomy syndrome, and it happens to about 40% of the people. I've seen a lot more. A lot of people that come in my office, if they have any type of right shoulder pain or brain fog or poor digestion, I always ask, do you have a gallbladder? And usually the people, well, why do you ask? Well, these are the symptoms. Okay, so now that you don't have a gallbladder, 
you're not going to emulsify the fats, fats effectively, and so you're going to have uh, malabsorption of the fats and what they do for you, especially the fat-soluble vitamins, vitamins A, D, E, and K. Now, vitamin A, what you're going to experience, possibly, you may experience some night vision problems or just vision problems, maybe dry eyes, dry skin, because vitamin A is good for that. D, vitamin D is good for uh, many things. Your immune system, your memory, your hormonal system helps bring calcium into the bloodstream. Vitamin K2 helps put the calcium into the bone. So you may have like bone pain because now you're not breaking this down effectively you're not absorbing vitamin D3. Vitamin E, vitamin E is great for your heart. It's good for the pituitary system. It's great for fertility. Vitamin K, vitamin K, then you have vitamin K1, which is good for what's gonna experience, you're gonna experience is maybe some bleeding pro issues, some bruising issues. Vitamin K2, what that does, it helps absorb calcium into the bone. So vitamin D, it brings the calcium into the bloodstream, but now it's a party. Vitamin K2, what that does, it helps escort the calcium from the blood system into the bone where it should go. And also, yes, it helps with decreased placking. Okay, that's just the vitamins that you're not, gonna be, you're not gonna be absorbing. So you need to take these additional supplements because you're not absorbing the fat-soluble vitamins because you don't have a gallbladder. So you may be experiencing what's called post-cholecectomy syndrome. And again, that's 40% of the people. I think it's a lot more because this is what I see a lot of. So when you don't have a gallbladder, what's happening? You can't digest the fats. So this is where you may have some like stomach irritation, burping, constipation, or diarrhea because one of the functions of bile is to lubricate the colon. Now, if you have too much bile, let's say you're taking too much bile salts. Yes, because the function of bile is to lubricate the colon. So if you're taking bile salts, back it down. However, if you are having diarrhea, it could be due to the fact that when they did the surgery, okay, these, two, these duct systems, they're too big. So you're dripping bile into the small intestines. You may have gas, bloating, stomach pain, hypothyroid. It affects your thyroid because why? Because one of the things that bile does, it helps with the conversion of inactive T4 to active T3. Now that's my, that's my TV. <laughs> so it's gonna, you're gonna experience hypothyroid symptoms because of the conversion factor. You're gonna experience right shoulder pain. Why? Because a phrenic nerve goes down from the neck, down and innervates the liver and gallbladder. So this is where you may have right shoulder pain or scapula pain. I've seen a lot of this. Dry eyes, dry skin because vitamin A. What my suggestion is always take this supplement in your big meals, especially breakfast, lunch, dinner. Don't worry about taking it with a yogurt or something like that. But you need to also watch your fat intake because if, you're, if you are, remember, I'm talking about the cheeseburgers to the donuts because you don't have this to help break it down. Please leave a comment down below now, my next video, I'm going to talk about the breakdown of fats, lipolysis, so you understand how this all comes together. Thank you very much. Take care.